Welcome back to the knife studio. In this second part, we're gonna take our cut up feather pattern billet and forge out a hunter blade and a fighter blade and get those heat treated up. Super straight, not any bad wobbles in it, which can be a pain to get straightened out. In part one of this series, I forged the feather pattern Damascus and got it almost to a stage where we could get the blades forged out. I was cutting it up with the bandsaw and uh, got one slice done, but on the second slice, the blade was wandering really bad. I ended up getting it cut the rest of the way through. I had to kind of shim the piece up to get the blade to go back straight through the billet. I think the problem was my blade was starting to get dull and uh, it was kind of drifting one direction because of the way blades kind of do that when they get dull sometimes. If you want to see how we got the billet up to this stage so far, then go check out part one of the series. I cut the feather pattern billet up into three slices. The outside pieces are 5 16 of an inch thick, plus or minus a little bit. And then the middle part is just under a half inch thick. I'm gonna use one of the outside slices for the hunter because we won't need to forge it out very much because it's almost to the right length already. And then the thicker middle piece, I wanted to leave thick enough to where I could forge out the uh, eight and a half inch fighter blade that I need to get out of the billet. And then the third slice is gonna be for the Damascus fittings on the fighter. The fittings on the hunter are gonna be stainless or blued steel, and I'm gonna have lots of engraving on those, so those aren't gonna be Damascus because they're gonna be covered in engraving. Check, check, check. One, two, three. Testing, testing. And the action. It's like forge. Uh, da, 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 da. It's really important to locate the center of the feather before you start forging out one of these blades because I want the center of the feather to come out perfectly with the tip. I ground those 45 degree angles on the front of the billet just so I would know right where the center of the feather is and that way I could uh, raise it or lower it to the right level for the final knife so it comes out at the tip. With feather pattern Damascus, you don't wanna to forge too much of the shape, especially on the blade part because you can really distort the pattern. So that's why I'm not forging the tip down a lot and I'm only lightly forging in the bevels. I'm not forging them in very much at all. But something that is important to forge very close to shape is the ricasso. You wanna get the ricasso height forged in very close to your final dimensions because that'll make the feather look a lot better. It'll look like the feather starts in the center of the ricasso and then it kind of goes down and goes through the blade and it just looks way better than if the, the center of the feather kind of goes out the bottom of the ricasso if you didn't forge that to shape. In this series, Dad's the videographer because Josh is super busy editing. So let him know if you like what he's doing so far. Hi, Josh. I'm taking a selfie. I always feel like I always run a little bit short with the amount of metal I leave myself for the tang. And I'm always stressed out thinking I'm not gonna get it long enough or wide enough. But in the end, it always ends up way longer than I need it and way thicker and everything and I have to grind it down, so. Yeah. Blades are all cooled down and ready to be profiled on the grinder. Got the blades profiled out. I'll probably get them a little bit closer and fine tune them after we do normalization and then even more after heat treatment. The fighter is gonna have Damascus fittings, so I forged those out. This will be the frame, and this piece is going to be the guard, front spacer, and pommel. And then right here, we've got a twist Damascus piece that's gonna be the pommel nut, a W twist pattern. I got the blades out of the heat treating oven, got them normalized up and ready to go. The next thing I wanna do is get them surface ground and then we'll mark out the edge on the height gauge on both blades and rough grind the bevels in. Oh, 
coffee break. Oh, that coffee's got a bit of a hop to it. Twenty minutes later. I've got the blade bevels rough ground on the fighter and the hunter. We've got our about 75 thousandths thick edge on the hunter and something like a 90 thousandths on the fighter. I also tried to get this grind to go up to the spine about the same distance on each side. The Damascus is looking super clean so far. I think we're ready to go ahead and stick these in the oven and uh, get them up to temperature and let them soak at 1550 for about 10 minutes and then we're gonna quench in room temperature uh, Parks 50 oil. One eternity later. The hunter's really hard. As soon as the oven's cooled down, we can uh, get this in there at 425 degrees and uh, let it soak for a couple hours to temper it. Now that these blades are hardened, you can kind of see a little sneak peek of what the pattern's gonna look like. It's really important with this feather pattern to have it come out at the tip. If you just left it coming out straight, it would have come out like right here and that would look really, really bad. While I'm waiting for the oven to cool down so we can temper the blades at 425 degrees, I'm gonna go ahead and work on the pommel nut. I'm using a piece of W twist pattern Damascus, and that'll go really well with the W feather pattern. Feather pattern doesn't make a very good pommel nut, and most of the time I don't really have pieces of feather pattern sitting around that would be the right size anyway. So this will look really nice, especially from the end. It'll have those nice Ws on it and uh, go really well with the feather. I really enjoy turning stuff down on the lathe but it can be a little bit challenging if you're working with a hard material. And this Damascus, even though it's been normalized, is pretty hard and uh, can tear up the tooling a little bit and dull your bits and cutters pretty quickly. Kind of got the pommel nut roughed in. Um, it's still way oversized, but I went ahead and drilled a hole in it for the 1032 tap that we're gonna use. I'm gonna start out with a 1032 starter tap that's got this little section with no threads, no thread cutting on it. Then we're gonna go in with a taper tap. And then after the taper tap, I'll go in with a bottoming tap to finish that last little bit at the very bottom of the hole. Before I turn down the pommel nut any further, I need to make a fake pommel. We're gonna actually have it rest down inside the pommel about 60 to 80 thousandths of an inch. So first I need to pre-drill a hole with a small bit, pilot hole, yeah, that's what it's called, pilot hole. And then I'm gonna go through with a larger drill bit, and this is just larger than the shank. The shank part is pretty much finished on the pommel nut. So this thing is 275 thousandths, and our shank on the pommel nut is 265 thousandths. And then we're gonna go in with this drill bit, which is a little larger. This one's 50 thousandths larger than the other one. So that'll give us about a 25 thousandths of an inch ledge inside the fake pommel. And with that ledge, we'll have a little bit larger area on the pommel nut that it can rest on and have a nice snug fit, hopefully. 
With this last drill bit, I only want to go down about 60 to 80 thousandths of an inch, just somewhere in there. And uh, it doesn't need to be exact. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. Maybe bumping 80. There's the little hole, and there's the big hole. Pommel nut's Damascus, so in order for it to etch as good as the blade, it needs to be hardened and tempered the same as the blade. Uh, hardened Damascus etches better than soft Damascus, so if it's really soft, it'll just kind of etch really gray and fuzzy. We're gonna stick it in this little holder, and then we're gonna use some anti-scaling compound, heat it up with the torch, quench it in oil, and then uh, temper it in the oven the same as we would a blade. The little basket idea didn't quite work out how I wanted to. The uh, torch kind of melted the basket in half in the middle and I had to hold the thing sideways just to keep the pommel nut from falling out on the ground while I was heating it up. In the next video, we're gonna find something in the large fighter blade that causes me to start over on the whole project. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. If you can hear dad right now, then comment below. Uh, he's not shooting any video, he's actually out washing the front of the house, so, yeah. <laughs> Making noise at the most inopportune times. <laughs> hey Dad! Yo. What are you doing? Making knives, not accessories. No, like, seriously, what are you doing? Bleaching the house. You're bleaching the house? Washing the road. What are you doing? Doing a voiceover. Oh. Sorry. No, you're fine. Does it sound like it's thundering and raining outside? A little bit. Bye. You want me to be done? No.